Amin. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, creator of the heavens and the earth, knower of the unseen and beyond, sustainer of all living creatures, giver of life and death, king of all kings, possessor of glory and honor. For him is everything from east to west, wherever we turn, we will acknowledge the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He listens to all and he sees all. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and from the sins of our actions. The one whom Allah guides, none can misguide, and the one whom He misguides, none can die. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet and messenger. My dear respected brothers, elders, beloved gathering, the past couple of weeks, we were speaking about the asbab al baraka how to obtain baraka, how to obtain blessings in every aspect and facet of our lives. Whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, whether it's health, whether it's family, doesn't matter. How to obtain this baraka? we were speaking about it for a very long time. We mentioned some, uh, some of our key points, and just to do a recap of what we've learned in the past, number one is to build a connection with the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person builds a connection with the Qur'an, building connection means what? Make time to recite it, for example. Make time to understand it, for example. So when a person makes time for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what? That we have revealed this Qur'an as a, as a source of barakah, as a source of blessing. But if you and I are not reading the Qur'an in our house, if we are not reading the Qur'an at our free times, then we are, we are void from this barakah. So number one, how to obtain barakah in every aspect of our life is to recite Qur'an. Number two we spoke about is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any action that we do. Whether it's you know, before entering the bathroom, we recite the dua, when leaving the bathroom, we recite the dua. Before eating, we recite the dua. When entering the masjid, coming out of the masjid, before sleeping, after sleeping, every every aspect of our life, when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in our life. And we spoke you know, extensively on this as well. Number three, we spoke about sadaqah. That when a person spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in that person's life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives back to that person, not just in two folds or three folds, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran, hisab, that we give back to that person in an uncountable number. We cannot even count, a person cannot even count how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives back. And we also learn that when we talk, when we uh, mention about sadaqah, sadaqah is not limited to only finance, it's not limited to only money. But sadaqah in anything that we do, this equals into sadaqah. And we spoke about that beautiful hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where the Prophet mentioned that seven things that even you know, a person after he passes away, a person can continue, uh, continually, he can uh, continuously get reward in his grave. So that jariya. So and we mention about that as well. And we mentioned, and, and and if you look into these seven points, many of them was not it was not about money. You know, you build you build a well, you build a canal, you build a place. You know, where a person can uh, can can stay, a traveler can stay. Anything good that you leave behind, and people can benefit from it. That is called sadaqah. So when a person does sadaqah, then Allah SWT blesses that person's life as well. Number four we learned about is to maintain family ties. Right? Maintain family ties, which is very important, especially in our Muslim and Desi culture, because we are very family oriented, but at the same time, when something happens, we're very fast and very apt in separating ourselves from our family. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to maintain family ties. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala taught us in the Quran, which we, um, uh, which we mention every single khutbah, every Friday, in every Friday. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan wa intai al qurba. Remember your relatives. Remember your relatives. So that was number four, to maintain family ties. When a person is able to maintain family ties and keep family close as possible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in every aspect of that person's life. And we spoke extensively about this as well. Number five, we spoke about this last time, and this is to wake up early. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, 
buri kali ummati fi bukuriha. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He has put blessing in the early portion of the of the day for the ummah. The Prophet is saying that the early portion of the day, the early portion of the day, when a person goes out to work, for example, maybe he's driving an Uber or whatever, if he has his office hours, starts from the morning, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts more barakah in that. And we all know, you know, even in, 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 in science, that when a person exercises in the morning, it's more beneficial for him than exercising in the evening. We know this as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in the early portion of the day. So we, we spoke about that as well. Today I would like to speak about whatever time I have left. Uh, point number six, how to obtain barakah in our lives is very simple. Something that we are all here for. And that is iqamatu salah. To establish salah. To say, pray salah properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقَ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكْ وَرَعَقِبَةُ بِالتَّقْوَى What is the translation? Allah he says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ He's telling us that command your family, meaning us, command your family بِالصَّلَاةِ to pray salah. وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا and be patient in it. What does that mean? How can a person be patient in salah? We all know how hard it is to wake up for Fajr. We all know, but we do it. And when a person does it, he is patient. He is patient for what? For the hardship that comes with it. Waking up 5:30 in the morning, and when the you know when the when the uh, nights are when the nights are short, and even waking up even earlier, right? And we know in the cold, you know uh, you you know when you you wake up, it's not easy. But yet, we, what do we have in our mind? That this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to do it. If I do this, then I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called patience. And there are different types of patience. We don't want to get into that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what? Wastabir alayha. Be patient in this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, La nas'aluka rizma. We do not ask you. Allah is saying that Allah is not asking us for any rizq. To give anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what? Nahnu la rizuku. We will give you sustenance. So the scholars, they mentioned very beautifully that in this one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He spoke about salah, the importance of salah. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He spoke about risk, sustenance. Something that you and I, the whole world, is running after. We are running after money. We are running after our risk. Sometimes we are running after our risk to such an extent that we are compromising our Islam. We are forgetting our salah. We are forgetting about our hukuk of the family. We forget forgetting about so many things because we are running after our risk. But Allah SWT says what? That you pray salah, you command for other people to pray salah, we will give you the sustenance. It's in our hands, it's our responsibility. And if you look into the Quran, we'll see that nowhere in the Quran did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Sallu salawatikum. Allah didn't say to pray your salah. Allah said what? Aqimu salah. Establish salah. Establish. There's a big difference. Nowhere in the Quran Allah mentioned, told us to, Allah didn't use the word pray salah. Allah said establish salah. Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. What does that mean to establish salah? To pray how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed. To pray how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the sahabas to pray. Not the way how we think that we should pray. You know, the other day, me and the students, we were sitting down downstairs, was downstairs, and you know kids, you know, kids, uh, uh, normally kids, they pray fast. So we, I was sitting with the students, and one of, one of the students in fifth, sixth grade, and he told me, teacher, look over there. And I looked, and I saw, subhanAllah, a man, a grown-up, maybe in his late 40s, he was praying salah so fast, even the kids were shocked. Even the young kids, they were also shocked. That Ustad, this guy is praying faster than me. This guy is praying faster than me. But of course, you know, this person, he just came, you know, he, he prayed extremely fast. I think he prayed four rakats in like 1.5 minutes or something, you know? And then the, even the kids were shocked. There is no Aqimu Salah there. When, I, when we pray just so we can pray, just so we can go over, get, get over it, just so we can, you know, you know, carry on in our life, with our life, then we are not fulfilling the responsibility that's there. We are not fulfilling it. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam tells, tell, he tells the sahabas that the worst thief, the worst thief is the person who steals in his namaz. The worst thief is the person who steals in his namaz. And then the sahabas, they ask the Prophet, Oh Prophet of Allah, how can a person steal in namaz? 
And then the Prophet وسلم, said more or less to the effect that when a person does not do his ruku and he does not do his sujood properly, he is stealing from, from his namaz. He is stealing from his namaz. When we do not give ample amount of time to our ruku and sajda, Subhan Rabbi al at least three times, nicely, properly. Subhan Rabbi al in our sajda, nicely and properly. When we are not giving that amount of time, then according to many scholars, our salah is not even is not accepted. And Nabi Ali Salatu Wasallam mentioned in the hadith that this salah that we pray every single every after every salah our, our namaz goes up to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But when a salah is not prayed properly, this is the saying of the Prophet. He said, when a salah is not prayed properly, it goes up, but then it be, it gets stopped by some angels. The angel stops that salah because it wasn't proper. They put that salah in a rag a dirty cloth and they throw it back in the face of that person. When a person does not pray a salah properly, then he does not fall under aqeem salah. He is not establish, establishing salah. He's just praying because he wants to get over with it. He wants to, you know, he's busy, maybe his business, or maybe there's, you know, uh, he's, he's parked in the meter or whatever it is. So aqeem salah, very, very important. When a person is able to establish salah and pray according to how the Prophet taught us, then you'll see how much barakah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in that person's life. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promised, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُ We will give you your risk. You pray salah properly and you command your family to pray as well. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? وَلَا عَاقِبَةُ لِلْتَقْوَى And then in the end of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the good ending, it's a good ending. We're all gonna die, we're all going to leave this world. But some people, they leave this world in a very unwanted manner. An unwanted matter, it could be in a car crash, it could be you know, a heart attack. Some people, may Allah protect all of us, they die in the bathroom. These are things that we don't want to die in this condition. But Allah says, taqwa, A beautiful ending are for those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are those people who have the love and the fear of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their heart. In their heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to understand the importance of establishing salah, not just merely praying salah, but to establish it. And this was one of the, this was the sixth point of how to obtain barakah in our life. And that is to, to establish our salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us tawfiq to practice for whatever has been said. Aqulu qawli hadha fa astaghfirullah li wa lakum anisa li muslimin fa astaghfiruh inna huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Just a couple of announcements, alhamdulillah. Um, as we all know, our Masjid, Masjid Kuba, we do many, many programs, right, for the community, uh, especially for the, uh, for the youth.